welcome to the program today, Insights into End Times. We're talking today about Revelation chapter 14, and we're looking into the pages of God's Word to get a better idea of the prophetic truths that God has for us in His Word. And hello everyone, I'm Carlton Duck, pastor of Gethsemane Baptist Church in Lynchburg, Virginia. So glad that you're along with us and pray that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family and trust that you're getting now ready for the great Christmas season as we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Gethsemane Baptist Church in Lynchburg, located at 411 Blue Ridge Street, not hard to find, one block off of Lakeside Drive. We'd love for you to come and worship with us anytime on Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. We've got a lot of great things happening during Christmas in those two particular services. Each week has a particular theme. So come and enjoy Christmas at Gethsemane in a nice social uh, environment that is safe in church. You know, we practice the protocol. We try to take care of our people. We even do what's called cold water fogging that cuts out and removes any viruses or anything in the, in the air. It's a really a great and safe process. And uh, if you don't use that process, it's available for you. And uh, one of our folks here in church provides that. And uh, you've probably seen some commercials on TV pertaining to that. But anyway, I want to talk to you today about the book of Revelation and the things that are going to be happening. We have had a catastrophic year. Things have just been going crazy. You know, whether it was the coronavirus or whether it's the election and all the politics and the uh, the unsettled environment in the Mideast, it's just a lot of things happening that we're going to talk about over the next several weeks. But I want to remind you that uh, we care for you and we'd love for you to come and be a part of what we're doing here at Gethsemane. And our worship times are 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. And you're certainly welcome. You can watch us on a live TV. You can also uh, watch us through our Facebook page, Carlton Duck. Special programs we'll have on Wednesday night. We have a, a Bible study. You'll ask me anything. And right now we've been on a prophetic study. And then, of course, on Thursday night, we go into live prayer session. That's at 7 p.m. A lot of good things happening at Gethsemane. And uh, we're getting all decorated for Christmas, and I hope you can come, bring your family, and enjoy the blessings of God here at GBC, Gethsemane Baptist Church. All right, let's talk about unlocking today some things that are in the pages of God's Word in Revelation chapter 14. And we understand that much of what we read contained in the pages of God's Word has to do with the history of man on earth. Of course, we look back in the Genesis account and we see that how God created and had God made a beautiful earth and provided everything for Adam and Eve. And then, of course, Adam and Eve sinned in the sight of God. And so, therefore, that's a difficult time. And through the times of God's Word, we see leading up to the, to the prophecies in the Old Testament, to the realization that Christ came and Christ died on the cross and paid the debt of sin in full. We're getting ready to celebrate that glorious time of him coming during the Christmas season. But let us never forget that uh, the birth was important, but the cross and the resurrection are a part of it also. But we look at God's word in nearly 50% of the Bible, of uh, the 66 books that are contained in God's word cover the history of mankind, 25% of the Bible contains instructions on how God desires for us to live, that we are to be holy people, righteous people, that we are to live for the Lord, and that can only occur when you have received the salvation that God offers. 25% of the Bible is prophetic. And so Revelation, uh, looking at these chapters, we've talked about some of the previous chapters, and we talked about the season of rapture. And again, I remind you that the Bible is a chronological, Revelation is a chronological book, and it gives us the chronological order in which things happen. Of course, first, the rapture of the church. Secondly, then into the tribulation period. Now, in Revelation chapter 12, uh, you can see the rise of the beast, the false prophet, 
who will inflict awful harm upon the earth during the uh, time of tribulation. I've had folks ask me questions uh, on Ask Me Anything on our prophetic series. We've been on Wednesday nights on my Facebook page. And they asked, is the, is the Antichrist on planet earth now? I don't know. Very strongly, he could be. And uh, the reality is we don't know who it is. There's been speculation through the years about who the Antichrist is going to be. Well, you know, folks, the thing, if you're a Christian, you should rejoice. You're not going to be here during that time. So it's not really important that we know who that person is. It's a fact today that many will suffer. So we need to win souls to Christ and to show them the reality of how horrible this time is going to be, not to mention to reject Christ basically seals your doom. It will seal your doom where there's no hope. But I'm glad Jesus offers hope to every person that will come to him. And I'm glad he tells us in his word, all that will come to me, I will in no wise cast out. Now, we get to chapter 14 of the book of Revelation, and it concludes the parenthetical interlude in which John gives an additional, he gives us additional information before continuing what we would call the narrative about the judgment that will come from heaven. And and this activity that will be, of course, administered uh, on the Antichrist and the things that will happen in those days. Now, in the 14th chapter, we see several things and that's going to happen in short order, like uh, the prophetic glimpse of the final disposition of the 144,000. Now, we remember that the 144,000 Jewish preachers are comprised of, comprised of 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel, and they will preach the gospel. They will preach the fact that salvation is through the blood of Jesus Christ. God has not and will not change his method of salvation. His method for the Jew or the Gentile is the same approach. You've got to come by the way of the cross. And so we understand, we'll see that there is the final disposition of the 144,000 preachers. Secondly, three angelic angelic announcements to the earth will take place. Thirdly, a blessing over those who keep the faith in spite of the persecution that they will suffer during the tribulation. And then fourthly, a heavenly declaration of the manner in which the earth will be judged. I'm telling you, he is the righteous judge and he will judge this earth. You can count on that. That is a reality. There's something you need to ensure that you today and, and understand and grasp today from the pages of God's word in the book of Revelation. And that is the fact that the devil is defeated. Praise God. Aren't you glad? Yeah, but preacher, he's given me a fit. I mean, every corner I turn, every element of life, everything going on, and look at the coronavirus. Look at what we're going through with this pandemic. Look what we're encountering through this election. Look at the condition of our world. Exactly. But the devil is defeated. And let me tell you what, it's just a matter of time and that he will be annihilated. The good news for you and I is the fact that if you read through the 22 chapters of the book of Revelation, when you get to the 22nd, 22nd chapter, he's not mentioned because he's going to be in the lake of fire that burns with fire and brimstone. Let me tell you, the devil, he sails a, a sinking ship and he rules a doomed domain And if you're serving him today and you've never come to Christ, you're on the losing side. But you can come over to the winning side by giving your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and repenting of your sin and inviting Christ into your heart and your life. So I'm glad to announce to you today the devil is defeated and everything and everybody in his kingdom is defeated also. So listen, all these crazy things that's happening Friend, it's not going to hold up. This world is not going to last. God is going to purge this earth with fire. So Jesus indeed is my everything, and I hope he's yours today also. Let me remind you of something we declared and have declared earlier, and the fact is that we need to revisit that. The transformation is by revelation. Transformation is by revelation. So God Almighty released the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ to John. 
50 miles off of the coast of Ephesus on an island that is called Patmos. And so John didn't only hear, but he saw. God revealed things to him. Folks, don't try to figure out God and how he does what he does and how he gave these visions to John. Just accept it and thank God that we have it today. So you look today, John had to be in a place that he had to be in touch with God. Now, Revelation 1 and 12, and you'll see today, and, and this is exactly what he says. What did John see? He saw Jesus. That's what he saw. For the word of God says, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt with a paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool and as white as snow and his eyes were as the flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they, if they burned in a furnace and his voice of the sounds of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in um, in his strength. So you, you see today, then you go back, and for the sake of time, we only have so much time on the program, I would encourage you to read chapter 14 of the book of Revelation and see what God says. And I will read you the first verse, and it says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 having his father's name written in their foreheads. Verse 2, I'm going to read a little bit of it. And I heard the voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as if it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which was redeemed from the earth. Well, as you read on down through, you'll see the events that take place. And you'll see that there was, in their mouth was found no guile, for they were without fault before the throne of God. Verse 9, uh, and, and uh, verse 5, rather. And, and you'll read through this chapter that's rather lengthy, but it has a tremendous amount of information contained in it. But understand, now, in reading Revelation, you've got to grasp the idea that God uses, uses a lot of symbolism and things that relate to other things in the Bible. A good book to read along with the book of Revelation is, of course, the book of Daniel. They go hand in hand, and you can see as God is revealing himself. So John, first he says, I saw a lamb. That lamb would, was the one that would take away the sins of the world. Well, we know who the lamb is. The lamb is the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and and then John said, Mount Zion, he is speaking of, when he's speaking of Mount Zion, he's speaking of Jerusalem. To oppose Jerusalem is to oppose Almighty God. We're reminded by King David to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You know, there's a lot of controversy going on now pertaining to Israel and the Palestinians and how, of course, the in the new administration that's coming in, they they want separate states again. They want to have Israel to be two separate states, to be Isra Israelite Jews and also to be the Palestinians. Well, that's in con that's contrary to God's word. And so, therefore, God gave. Go back and read Genesis. God gave this land to the to Israel, not to the Jew, not to the Arabs, not to the Palestinians, nor anyone else. He gave it to God's people. That's God's land. I've been there. It's an amazing place. You can feel the presence of God there. I prayed at the Wailing Wall. It's an amazing, amazing place to go. So realizing to oppose, to oppose Israel is to oppose, is to oppose God. Psalm 132, verse 12, verse 13. For the Lord hath chosen Zion, he hath desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. Then you can read Psalm 2 and verse 6. I have set my king upon the holy hill of Zion. 
So listen, the lamb is about to arrive in Jerusalem as the king of kings and as the Lord of lords. They will have his name in their foreheads, these 144,000 Jewish preachers. And, and they will not be the mark of the beast of 666, but it will be the name of the Lord. Oh, I'm glad that we have his mark on us today. I'm glad no weapon formed against us can prosper, as Isaiah said in Isaiah 54, 17. If God then be for you, who can be against you? You know, Adoniah, he is the Lord today. He's Elohim. He is God today. He is Petir. He is the Father. And so realizing this in verse 2, this magnificent sound fills heaven and fills the earth. And the heavenly chorus with the voices of many waters, meaning many people, proclaiming the majesty and the greatness of our God. And the crescendos turn into a thunder-like proportion, accompanied by harps, which are the sim harps are always a symbol of joy. So joy is always associated with Christ's redemption. You've got the joy of the Lord in your life today, which is your strength. Well, preacher, things are so bad, and what are we going to do? We're going to rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice, as Paul said. God is with us, and he is for us. He today is going to watch over us. Don't be filled with fear and panic. Today be filled with God's spirit today and let the joy bells of heaven go off in your soul today. I see it so much in Christians today. They're so consumed with worry and fretting over the situations of the world. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not trusting God, then what can you trust? Can you trust government? Can you trust man? Can you trust political leaders? No. You put your confidence in God because he is your refuge and your strength and your very present help in time of trouble. Keep this in mind. Anyone who receives the mark of the beast will receive eternal damnation. Now, for those of you who are watching this, and you're thinking, well, I'm just going to take my chance, Pastor. Um, listen, um, you, you know that souls will be saved during the tribulation. Well, you're right. I, I've got to agree with you on that. But before you go any further with that, friend, the word says that you will be deceived. And because of, well, you've seen what's happened this year. People have gone crazy over just the basics of life. I mean, things like the uh, toilet paper and, and paper towels and things of that nature. It's been, and we're right back in that same position right now. You go in the stores, you can't find paper products and things of that nature. It's horrible. Well, listen, people will go at any length to get. They'll pay absorbent amounts just to get these, what we call necessities of life. So what, what do you, makes you think that um, during the tribulation that you won't take the mark of the beast? I contend that you will because of the, out of the necessity of food, and raiment, and everything else that you need in life. And you can't buy, sell, trade, or do anything, or get anything, unless you have the mark of the beast. So you will compromise that. You will take the mark to get, because of the basics that you need. I'm telling you, Christ is offering you something today. It's called eternal life in, in his blood, that you can come to him and receive him as your personal savior. You know what happens at that transaction? When you call upon the Lord and invite him into your life, do you realize he saves your soul? He puts his mark on you. Your name is written in heaven, and you cannot no longer belong to the devil. You can't lose your salvation, and you are eternally belonging to the Lord. And when the rapture occurs, you're going to be with the Lord. Or if if you go prior to that, even by death, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You win. But if you keep gambling with your soul, you're going to lose. And I mean big time. You're going to lose your eternity. And once that is sealed, there's no turning it back. So friend, these 144,000 will preach the same message I preach in my pulpit uh, every Sunday about Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life. 
And that's the only way to heaven. There's not going to be another way during the tribulation period. There's not going to be some other means that we even hear in churches today. Well, do the best you can. Be baptized or whatever. Just try to hold on or get through. Where are you hearing and where are you getting that at? If Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Preacher, for Pete's sake, for heaven's sake, for the sake of a soul, tell people the truth. That the only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. So in verse 6, we're introduced to the first angel who proclaims a very special message. And the gospel, the good news, is called good tidings or glad tidings. And the good news is this, the fact that it includes the message of the blood in every dispensation. Remember, Hebrews tells us without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. That means there is no forgiveness. You have to have the blood of Jesus. So the angel not only proclaims the everlasting gospel, but the angels really announce a bombardment of judgment on those who have rejected the message of Jesus Christ. This earth is going to get the message of judgment that it has been waiting for for a long time. God is going to pour out his power on this earth upon the people. In verse 8, we find angel 2. Babylon is the religious system during that time, and it's directed by the false prophet. And people will have a form of religion, a form of godliness, but they are serving the wrong God. They're serving Satan. They're serving the false prophet. They're serving the Antichrist. And they're not serving God. Folks, today, I'm telling you, it's alarming to me today that churches are not preaching the gospel. I realize people have needs. I realize we're going through some tough times, but this is the time we need to proclaim the message of God's word. In a season where people are turning away from God and cursing God and saying all things that really are contrary to God's will and God's word, this is a time the church needs to be an example and to proclaim and to live the message of the cross. So verse 8 is, is the impending judgment to be released upon the religious and the political Babylon. Relig re realize this, there will be a religious system, a false system, which is preparing now. People want to have religion, but re your religion is not going to save you. I said that, that's right. Your religion is not going to save you. A lot of folks have religion, but they're religiously lost. They go through rituals, but they're ritualistic lost. You need a relationship, and that relationship is only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. So a one-world church united in a one-world political system, that is exactly what Satan wants. And then verse 9 is the third angel, and the third angel, of course, we see announces the doom of those who worship the Antichrist and this image. So we, what we've received and understand here, they have received the mark of the beast. This is the coming judgment of hell fire upon this earth. God's wrath will, will be on this earth undiluted. And the judgment is endless. Seemingly, it's unceasing. Matthew 25, 46. The law shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. And let me just step back and give you some other basics on chapter 14 today. Chapter 14 is an informative chapter. And of course, we've seen the details of the 144,000 Jewish Holy Ghost preachers. And we've seen that the seal of God is in their forehead. They have the mark of God on their lives today. They had a unique song of praise that they proclaimed to God. And listen, folks, Thank God we have a song to sing to, the song of the redeemed today. And it's the only song that we know to sing. And it's a song today that proclaims the liberty that we have in Christ. Now, there are several things today remaining. 
We see the Antichrist is operating. We see the Spirit of God is operating. We see the false prophet is operating. We see demon spirits are operating. We see the gospel is operating. But let me tell you, the, the three angels I spoke of, to, uh, of uh, is God demonstrating his love and his warning of the consequences which are to come. God still demonstrates his love by the preaching of these angels. How long will God warn and finally the end will come? How long are you going to continue to listen to the fact that you need to be born again and you keep pushing it aside where now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. So God is not, God today is providing. He's long suffering to us, with not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Patience today. Listen, how long is God's patience going to continue today? I'm telling you, we need today to live for Jesus be faithful to the Lord, be found in his word, found in his house, and proclaiming the message of God. And the last point deserves some real additional attention that is found in Revelation 14, and that's 17 through 19. The wine press was a common feature, and that's what it talks about on farms and estates in that part of the world. And we find grapes were trodden and and the, and it, to squeeze out the juice, the grape juice, and sometimes it was referred to as the blood of the grape. In this case, in this case, we find the angels are reapers, and the vineyard is the earth, and the grapes are, that will follow. We see uh, of the followers of the antichrist, and the juice is the blood, and the wine press of certain places and times like is in detail about what is going to happen in Armageddon, that the blood will flow up to the horse's bridle. Friend, who could tread the grapes? John later names him, names him as faithful and true. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. He treads the wine press with a fury, with a fury and the wrath of almighty God. And so we understand today that in these times, in these places, that Christ right now is offering the hope of eternity through his blood and his glorious salvation that he offers to all people. And so when we read through what occurs here in John 14, there will be a horrible time where the wrath of God is poured out and people will ignore God. They won't cry out for mercy. They won't cry out for the blood of Jesus to wash away their sins, they will blaspheme God's name. Jeremiah said last, for the day is great so that none is like it. Daniel said, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was. Are we coming into that? I honestly believe that we are on the threshold of the coming of the Lord, and that will be then after that, the beginning of the tribulation. Make sure that you know Christ. And if you do know Christ, Get on the firing line and start serving God and start being faithful to the Lord. Be in prayer. Read your Bible and believe and see what God can do. And you'll be amazed at the power of our great and awesome God. Thank you today for tuning in for a time of prophecy as we opened up Revelation 14 today. We were on time constraints, and maybe we can come back to this. But uh, there's a lot of information here. But I pray it's been a blessing to your life and your heart. I want to say something to you. I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas, you and your family. And I'd love for you to come and celebrate Christmas here at Gethsemane Baptist Church. Every Sunday, starting this Sunday, it's going to be a special time of celebration. Our worship times 930 and 1130. And that's at 411 Blue Ridge Street here in Lynchburg called Gethsemane Baptist Church. And we have a great time for our kids in the pew called the Kitty Care Kit. That's an amazing program. I could take another 30 minutes and talk to you about the results of what that program has provided for our kids and how they love it. Also, I'd like to encourage you that uh, you can watch us, watch us on our live TV. You can also visit us on our website. That's alivegbc.com. And you can also join us in different services times of teaching, times of prayer, on my Facebook page. That's Carlton Duck. I really appreciate you tuning in today. I pray your heart has been enlightened and lifted up, and I pray that you have been blessed, you and your family. You are important to us here at Gethsemane, and we'd love to see you. Come worship with us, and may God mightily bless you today. Again, thank you for tuning in, and uh, may your day be a great one, and again, a blessing to you, and Merry Christmas. 
and may God mightily, wonderfully, gloriously bless you. <laughs>